is an electric vehicle cheaper to drive than its gasoline counterparts? I'm going to do some math and find out. Electric vehicles or battery electric vehicles like this little Fiat 500e. Uh, there's a lot of love out there in the online community for these vehicles. There's a lot of hate out there for these vehicles in the online community as well. For as many people who absolutely love the idea of going electric, there are people who are going to call them junk, who are going to just say since it won't work for them, they're useless and nobody should use them. And I saw a comment that said gasoline is cheaper. So I want to compare the cost per mile of this specific EV with my other internal combustion engine vehicles that I have at home. I'm also going to compare this Fiat 500e with a comparable Fiat 500, its actual internal combustion engine or ICE counterpart. And I'm going to compare the cost per mile between my F-150 and the projected cost per mile on the F-150 Lightning. So Rachel asked me a short while ago uh, about how much was it costing me to drive the electric Fiat to work compared to driving my truck. So I did some math and I figured it out and of course it was cheaper and I'll tell you exactly how but I went ahead and I expanded on that and I wanted to share what I found. So let's start off with the cost of gasoline. Right now based off of a a, a local check using Gas Buddy to, to check for the lowest gas prices around us. Right now, 87 octane or regular unleaded gasoline is three dollars and sixty-seven and nine tenths cents, or three dollars and sixty-eight cents. Now, I also have a couple of vehicles that only take premium, and premium at that same exact gas station is at four dollars and forty-six cents, or four forty-five nine. But we'll say four dollars forty-six cents. I have normally been commuting in my Ford F-150 pickup truck. It's a 2013, it's the V6 engine, and it gets right now, according to the onboard trip computer, a fuel economy rating of 18.6 miles per gallon. Filling that vehicle up at $3.68, I figured I'd try to find out the cost per mile. Well, if a gallon of gas costs three dollars and sixty eight cents I can divide that by my fuel mileage of eighteen point six and that will tell me how much each mile I'm driving costs me in gasoline and at that fuel economy at that gas price my truck costs me nineteen point seven eight cents per mile or roughly twenty cents per mile the truck had been getting 19.2 miles per gallon, but the computer got a little thrown off when we did a little towing, which takes it down to 19 cents. So we'll use that 19 cents figure for how much the truck costs me to drive. What about Rachel's car? It's sitting right here behind us, the 2019 Subaru Crosstrek. Well, we recently took that one on a cross-country road trip, and one of the best fuel mileage runs that we had on that cross-country road trip was 28.3 miles per gallon. It had a little bit of, you know, elevation climb and all of that. So if I take $3.68 and I divide it by 28.3, that little Subaru costs us 13 cents per mile to drive. Then there's my motorcycle, a 2020 Indian Challenger that takes premium gas only. It won't take anything lower than 91 octane. And right now that's $4.46 a gallon. According to the onboard computer, on my motorcycle it gets 41 miles per gallon. So if I divide $4.46 by 41, I get 10.87 cents per mile, or round it up, 11 cents per mile is how much my motorcycle costs. So the truck is 19 cents per mile, the Crosstrek is 13 cents per mile, my motorcycle is 11 cents per mile. Then there's Rachel's motorcycle which is a 2020 Honda Rebel 500. Now we haven't been keeping track of the fuel mileage on Rachel's motorcycle but I went to Fuely which is a website that people report their average fuel economy and according to Fuely it's 62.5 miles per gallon for a 2020 Honda Rebel 500. Now if I take the price of regular unleaded at $3.68 and I divide it by 62.5 I get 5.88 cents per gallon or round it up 
six cents per gallon on Rachel's bike. Problem is, when we're riding together, we want to fill up without running the card twice. And since my bike takes premium, we put premium in the Rebel as well. It's not going to hurt it. So we're really, we're paying four forty-six dollars for gasoline in the Rebel. And at 62.5 miles per gallon, it's really seven cents per mile instead of six. So it's another penny per mile. So again, the truck, 19 cents. The Crosstrek, 13 cents. My motorcycle, 11 cents. Rachel's motorcycle, seven cents. Now let's talk about our electric vehicle. We have a 2018 Fiat 500e that we've had for a little over a month and I've put a little over a thousand miles on in that time driving to and from work. Now as I've been driving I take note of the state of charge of the battery when I leave and I take note of the state of charge of the battery when I get back. If I didn't plug in anywhere during that commute I know that that's how much power I used. That percentage if, for instance, if I started at 100% and I'm at 30% when I get home, I use 70% of the battery. The battery has 21.3 usable kilowatt hours in it. So I take 21.3, multiply it by 0.7, and that gives me an educated estimate on how many kilowatts I used in that vehicle. Then I divide that by my miles that I drove, and that tells me what my miles per kilowatt hour really comes out to. And right now my average miles per kilowatt hour is 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. So now I just need to figure out the cost of a kilowatt, a kilowatt hour from how I get my power. So first let's talk about public charging. Now there are a couple of free chargers near where I live, but they're out of my way. And really, I need to look at the most expensive option, which is going to be a charge point level 2 charger that is just off the freeway on my way home. I'm not saying that charge point's expensive, I'm just saying compared to the other two that are nearby that are free, if it costs anything, it's going to be the most expensive. And it's very inexpensive when you get right down to it. It costs me 90 cents per hour that I'm plugged in. Now, our Fiat is not a road trip EV. It's not capable of it. The fastest it can charge at is about 6.7 kilowatts. And that's what I can get in about an hour of pl being plugged in at that charge point station. If I say I get 6 kilowatts in an hour, it makes the math easy. And I can divide 90 cents by 6, and it costs me 15 cents per kilowatt at that charger. I then take that um, cost per kilowatt. 15 cents. Divide it by 3.3, my miles per kilowatt hour, to find out what my cost per mile is. And my cost per mile on the 500E at 15 cents, the most expensive rate, is 5 cents per mile. 2 cents per mile cheaper than Rachel's Honda Rebel 500. I don't charge at the charge point station. I charge at home. I don't pay 15 cents per kilowatt hour. My power company charges 11 cents per kilowatt hour. At that 11 cents per kilowatt hour rating, it works out to 3.35 cents per mile. But realistically, I don't pay anything for electricity. Our roof has 52 solar panels on it. We overproduce electricity from our solar panels. We produce more through those than we use, even factoring in plugging in the electric vehicle. So at worst, it's costing me money that the electric company is going to pay me back. Now, the electric company isn't going to pay me 11 cents per kilowatt hour. They're going to pay me 8.5 cents per kilowatt hour. So rather than having to pay for it, it's money I don't get paid, but it, let's figure it's a cost. So at 8.5 cents per kilowatt hour, that really works out to about 2 cents per mile. Actually, 2.57 cents per mile. Well, what if I do this on my trip? My commute is 54.5 miles. My truck at 19 cents per mile is going to cost me $10.36 to drive to work and back for one day. Do that five times a week. That's just my commute. If I commuted with Rachel's car instead, it would be at 13 cents per mile, $7.09 to drive Rachel's car for the whole week. If I ride my Challenger at 11 cents per mile to and from work for the whole week, it costs, uh, for one day, it costs me $5.94. Truck, 
$10.36. Crosstrek, $7.09. My Challenger, $5.54. If I hopped on Rachel's Rebel 500, it would cost me $3.82 to drive to work and back. Using my solar power and just factoring the money that I'm not getting paid is what it costs me. Then my drive to work and back is $1.40 in the Fiat. Now, I was commuting with my truck. I went from ten thirty six down to $1.40. I don't take Rachel's car to work and I definitely don't take her, her bike. So I'd be looking at the truck, the Challenger, or the Fiat. $10.36 a day for the truck, $5.94 on the motorcycle, or $1.40 in the Fiat. The Fiat is a lot cheaper for me to drive it. Now let's compare apples to apples. Obviously, driving a small car like a Fiat 500 is going to save money over driving a full-sized F-150, but let's compare the Fiat 500e to its internal combustion engine gas counterpart. A 2018 Fiat 500, according to Fuley, averages 30.5 miles per gallon, based off of the same figure of $3.67.9 per gallon, is a cost per mile of 12 cents and over the run of my commute is six dollars and seventy cents compared to that dollar forty for the 500e in a couple of years i'll be able to convert my ford f-150 lightning reservation into an order and i want to know how much it's going to cost compared to my current truck that would be apples to apples well it's supposed to have a 98 kilowatt hour usable power battery in the standard range configuration and the EPA has confirmed that that battery should have 230 miles of range. That's going to work out to 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour for its efficiency. Using the same math that I used before, based off of my solar panel charging rate, how much I'm not going to get paid back, the truck, the F-150 Lightning, will end up costing me 3.69 cents per gallon rounded up to almost four cents over my commute of 54 and a half miles that truck will cost two dollars and one cent for my commute the closest thing to that is rachel's honda rebel 500 at three dollars and 82 cents 327 on my commute if we don't put premium in it okay i have a question all right um it seems like gas prices are pretty high right now so it might not be fair to do your comparison at the current gas prices because they might not always be this high. That's a good point. I also did some math figuring out how much gas would have to be for the internal combustion engine variants to be the same price cost per mile as their electric variants. Good to know. And I'd like to say I did some fancy math in to, to figure out how that was and I could explain the equation to you, but really what I did was I created a, a spreadsheet in Google Sheets and plugged in formulas that did the division and multiplication stuff for me automatically to get the cost per mile. And then I just went over to the cost per gallon and I experimented with the numbers until it came out right. Trial and error. That's what you do when you can't remember your calculus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about the, the Fiat 500e. First of all, uh, for an internal combustion engine, Fiat 500, to have the same cost per mile as the 500e charging off of our solar panels at home, uh, how much do you think it would be? I'm, I'm guessing like two fifty a gallon. That sounds reasonable to me. 78 cents. It would have to be 78 cents a gallon for the Fiat 500 gasoline powered internal combustion engine to have the same cost per mile as the 500E. And if gas prices went down that low, I got to think I got to think that electricity prices would go down also. Oh, that's I true. figured that out at, if gas prices went down and electric prices stayed exactly the way that they are now Which is probably, with the high cost of energy that it is now. Yeah. For the F150 Lightning compared yeah. to my F150 that's sitting in our driveway right now, yeah. how much would gas have to go down to for that one to be a wash? Well, if you said 78 cents before, I'm going to guess maybe about the same. 68 cents a gallon. Dang! The, the electric F-150 
uh, is so much more efficient than the V6 2013 F-150. It would have to be down 68 cents per gallon. Um, and I haven't seen gas prices that low since before the big gas crisis in the mid 1970s. That's a long time. So you're waiting. A, it's a big gamble if you think it's going to go that if low you're, anytime if soon. If you're going to think that gasoline is going to be the cheaper way to go, if and again, I'm only addressing this argument of the gasoline car is cheaper to drive anyway. Which, okay, so we're not going to bring up the oil changes that you don't have to do on an electric vehicle and, and, the, pad changes. and the ease of maintenance and, and, and things like that. Mm. Just gasoline and fuel. Fuel. Gasoline and electricity. We're talking, the gasoline's going to have to go down to between 68 and 78 cents a gallon just to be a wash, just to be equal. And that's with electricity rates the way they are now. That's amazing. All right, I got another question. Uh huh. So we have a huge solar system, and so power is actually pretty cheap for us. What if a person is thinking about doing this, but they don't have solar panels, and they have to pay regular energy prices so for their electricity? If I just do the math on the Fiat 500, and mm -hmm. I compare the gasoline-powered Fiat 500 to the 500E, same car, just whether it's electric or gasoline, at the rate that our electricity company charges of 11 cents per kilowatt hour, gasoline would have to go down to a dollar three per gallon. A dollar three. Which still, we're talking, it hasn't been that low in well over 20 years, if not close to 50. But you can dream. 